Hey, Dr. Rick Wallace, the following segment is brought to you by Inbox Dollars. Inbox Dollars is actually something that I used a long time ago when things got really hectic and I needed some income to steady me until I recovered and got some things done. Uh, you're not going to get rich by it, but if you're looking to make some extra money, Inbox Dollars is exactly what you need to check out. Look, you can get paid for taking surveys, opening emails. Uh, and a bunch of other different things. The link to find out how you can do all of this is in the box. It's free to find out, free to sign up. Check it out. I'm out of here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is off to a great start for this week. Uh, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, Remember, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. I'm excited to announce a couple of new things. First and foremost, uh, this particular segment that's going to actually be done uh, Monday through Fridays is going to now be specifically now. It's still a part of the Vision X Institute, but it's going to be known as the Dream Matrix. Uh, this is where we're going to talk about how we shape our lives based on our internal dream. And so this is going to be where we talk about going for the higher uh, things in life, aspiring for the higher things in life, not the default. Uh, most of us are living life in the default setting, and I'm going to get off into that. But I, I'm, I'm excited about this because now this particular segment is known as the Dream Matrix. And the Dream Matrix is brought to you by Inbox Dollars and Living Green uh, Supreme Foods. Inbox Dollars uh, actually is something that's close to me because when I went through a very difficult time in my life and things were extremely tight and everything that I had fought so hard to have and earn and cherish and was was literally over over a number of years snatched from underneath me and I landed flat on my back and I had to rebuild and I didn't have a starting point and it was literally inbox dollars uh in its infancy uh, that allowed me that opportunity to literally go online and do things to earn money. It didn't cost anything to get signed up. So it was exactly what I needed. Uh, it was a very difficult time in my life and I remember it uh, vividly. And I remember saying to myself, I'm not defeated. I'm not beaten and I'm going to do something. And I figured, man, uh, the internet is an immensely powerful market. It allows me to reach people uh, with minimal effort, I'm going to find something to do. And it wasn't what I was going to do long term, but I needed something to underwrite me while I reestablished myself. And so this one is kind of uh, awesome that I'm actually working with them now. Second of all, Living Green Supreme Foods. Living Green Supreme Foods is a must. Uh, as I continue to work to get healthy, uh, to reestablish myself, those who know me long term know uh, that it's, it's always been a part of my life. And over the last, say, few years, uh, not going to name how many, but I just got so caught up in doing the things I've been doing, writing books, doing lectures, uh, doing research and everything that I was allowing myself to decline. So I had to start off getting healthy. And I, I love vegetables. I absolutely love vegetables. But to eat the n amount of vegetables you need to eat to get your optimal nutritional value for every day, is ridiculous and i'm like man i love it i love beets but i'm not eating that many beets i love uh cruciferous uh green vegetables but i'm not eating that much cabbage i'm not eating that many greens but living green supreme food is a way for you to supplement that so that everything that you devour doesn't have to be green foods but they're so important uh, especially for their uh antioxidant um uh, properties uh, a big part of the way your body fights off uh, things like even uh, cancer goes down to how much you consume as far as green food. Your nutrition really needs to be a huge part of what you do. I help you with the thinking and the 
the psychological points, but you also need to make sure that your body is consuming what's valuable uh, and uh, healthy for it. So this is going to be an ongoing thing. Uh, Living Green, I'm, I'm also still looking for other sponsors who want to sponsor it, but Inbox Dollars uh, and Living Green Supreme Foods, the links to find out how you can take advantage of that. And the beautiful thing about uh, Inbox Dollars, let me be honest with you now. I'm not trying to sell you a pie in the sky thing. You're not going to get rich with inbox dollars. But if you need to supplement income or if you are in a situation where you really need to make something happen and you're willing to invest the time, that's all that's going to cost you is your time. You can get money. Um, and I know it because I did it. So I'm, I'm, I'm partnering with them and I vet whoever sponsors and are our partner with because I want to be able to confidently back them. So that's out of the way right at the top of the description box go in there check it out let me know what you think i want your feedback on it that's going to be extremely important with my partnership with them as we move forward now here we are let's talk one of the things that i sit up and i see a lot is how people consult the random opinion of minimal minded people that they don't know or don't care about, or they know don't like them or don't uh, support them, but they're constantly consulting them. And when I say consulting them, I don't mean put a, picking up the phone and calling them and asking them for their opinion. I mean, they're probing their opinions. They're giving weight to their opinions. They're literally consulting what other people say about them and about what's possible for them in order to make the decisions about what they're going to do. Let me tell you something. Stop worrying about what they say. I get tired of hearing about what they say. Don't worry about what they say, because at the end of the day, you don't need them. What you need is a direct relationship with the most high and a confidence in yourself that whatever you desire to create in this life, you have the capacity to do so. Now, in saying that, it in no way um, uh, asserts that it's going to be easy. See, that's another thing that we have. We have this idea that if it's meant for me, it's going to happen to me. We get this idea that whatever's meant for me is mine. No, whatever's meant for you means that if you sit up and you apply yourself, everything that comes, comes by way of faith. Faith without works is dead. What does that mean? I can sit up and want something. I can even believe that I deserve it. But if I don't actually invest myself in the habit, especially in the dark moments, especially in the dark moments, then I won't have it. See, what we have gotten is we've gotten into this environment where we live in an entitled culture, a culture that believes it belongs to me. Just because I want it, I should have it. I ain't did anything to get it, but because I want it, I should have it. It's in our kids. Kids walking around six years old with a $1,200 phone. Where did we get that from? Already, you are, what you're doing is you're establishing a mindset that I don't have to do anything. I can just have it. But see, life doesn't work that way. So when they get out in the real world and it's time to pursue things and it doesn't come easy, they fold. When it doesn't come easy, they back down. When it doesn't come in the time frame, see, they don't know how to deal with delay. See, a lot of them have learned because of the entitlement that if I'm going to get it, it's going to come when I ask for it. Why? Mama always gave it to me. Daddy always gave it to me. Uh, 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 it always came. Now that there's going to be times where you're going to actually have to wait on some things. Delay now appears to be denial. Delay does not mean denial. Delay in no way means delay simply means now your commitment to actually having what you say you want is being tested. Delay is sitting up saying, how bad do you want it? How committed are you? How, how, how much are you willing to push through in order to obtain it? That's the problem that we have is that we want to sit up and have it laid in our laps. And when it doesn't, we start to complain. We start to whine. We start to point fingers. We start to look back. And maybe he was right. Maybe she was right. Maybe what they were saying, maybe this, no, uh, Marion and I were talking about it this weekend. Suffering is not your lot in life. God did not design you to suffer. God did not design you to live your entire life enclosed in poverty. God did not design you to live your whole life begging from the crumbs from someone else's table. God did not design. God designed you for greatness. If we're going to talk about the true nature of the most high, we must understand that what is excellent never designs anything less than excellent. 
See, that's what you got to understand. See, if I'm connected to God, then I got to understand some things about God. See, what if God is everything that I think God is, and I'm not telling you how to view God, but if you're viewing God from the level I'm viewing, I'm saying God is excellent. God is powerful. God is, oh no, there's nothing that stumps God. Then why would God design me for failure? Why would something excellent design something below par? Do you get what I'm saying? What I'm saying is you got us. So if I'm designed from ex, for excellence, if I'm designed to perform, if I'm designed for greatness, then there's something in me. But see what happens is, and this is where most people fail, excellence and greatness is not a default setting. Oh, now, hold on. What, what, wait a minute. Let's, let, let's look at this. Excellence and greatness is not, a is not a default setting. What do I mean by that? You don't just show up and be great. You don't just show up and be excellent. See, excellence and greatness has to be activated. It has to actually be pursued. It has to actually be aimed at. It has to actually be, have actions that are associated with achieving it. It is not just show up and be great. It's show up, put in the work, be committed to the cause, have an understanding of your purpose, know how you're going to impact the world, be so committed to it that it cannot be shaken, that you cannot be turned back, that you do not relent. That is how you achieve. Ain't no room for whining and pointing fingers in the pursuit of greatness. Another thing that I had to learn in, in, in developing this life, like I said, I've been through some things over the course of my life. I've been through a number of different challenges, uh, many of which would have made the average person fold. But, but see, I, I, I've got a mindset. My, I came into this world to finish what I was given, and that's the only option. I don't have an option to fold. I don't have an option to feel sorry for myself. I don't have an option to go, oh, whoa, it's me. I don't have an option to sit down and wonder why everything is going wrong. My option is to perform, not to perform because the situation, the circumstances, and the environment are conducive for, 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 for the excellence in performance, to perform regardless and despite of. It is to sit up and show up and do the best that I can each and every time, knowing that there's something on the inside of me at the very core of my being that demands excellence, that responds to effort, and that will put me where I desire to be if I show up and put in the work. But see, a lot of us have this perspective. I tell you all the time, your philosophy is one of the most powerful determining factors in how your life is going to turn out how you see things. See, uh, there's a saying to say, there are some people that literally look out, people, there are some people who look out the window and see the beauty, the beautiful sunset, while some other people look out the same window and see the smudges on the glass. Life is about perspective. What do you choose to see? Do you choose to see the imperfections and the, and, and, and the flaws in this world and in this life and in yourself above the beauty and the power therein. I, I, I prefer to see the sunset. I prefer to see the opportunity. I prefer to see how things can be if I apply myself. I prefer to see how many lives I can touch if I am at the peak of my existence, if I'm living at the level of my design. I choose that I'm not going to be at a default setting of average. See, average is the default setting. See, if you just show up and do what everybody else does, you become what everybody else is and you get what everybody else has. If you want something greater than that, you're going to have to be willing to put in something. So while other people were sitting around and showing up at the club, when I decided to ele elevate myself, I said, I got to get out of the club. So I had to get out of the business that had me in the club. Was it making me money? Absolutely. But it wasn't going to lead me to this thing of greatness. See, it was a bunch of people popping bottles in the club. That wasn't going to make me great. That might have made me popular. But see, popular isn't great. See, popular does not measure impact. Popular measures how many people know you and how many people. Yeah, you buy bottles and stuff. People are like you. Don't mean they really like you. Just mean they like what you're doing for them. You got to learn that too. But when you sit up, when I just sit up and said, okay, I got to leave this. I got to make some sacrifices. While other people were watching shows and reality shows, I was reading books. I was reading books so that I could write books. And see, people, people, people don't get it. See, there's a sacrifice that has to be made. You got to change your thinking. If, you change, if you're thinking like the average person, you're going to get what the average person gets. Look, the average person reads one book a year. 
the top five performers in the world read a minimum of four books a month. And it goes up from that. The, the goal is to grow yourself intentionally. The goal is to understand how you move in this world, how God designed you to function. Every last one of you, no matter how much you're like other people in certain ways, that's a uniqueness about you that God had planted in you that gave you immeasurable value in this world because there is nobody like that can do it just like you do it because God designed you to do it. And that's where your value lies. Far too many of us are born unique but die carbon copies of somebody else or somebody else's vision for our lives. That's the problem. You're not living in your design. You're living the carbon. You're living as a carbon copy of something you saw somebody else do. You wanted to do it because they look good doing it. You want to do it because they were getting attention doing it. You want to look good, because you want to do it because all of the other things that came, but you lost yourself and your vision. You lost the ability to see where you were supposed to be headed. You lost the ability to touch the world like nobody else could touch them. And it has left you meandering through a maze of mediocrity and struggling to find your footing. But that can change, but you've got to change your perspective, your personal philosophy. Um, philosophy. You got to look beyond the smudges in the glass and see the sunset. You got to learn how to see the glass being half full instead of half empty. You got to learn that no matter what you're looking at right now, there's something greater on the other side if you persevere. You can be anything you desire to be if you're willing to put in the work. Life will pay whatever price you demand of it. The problem is most people don't want to meet the counter demands of life. Yeah, you tell life, I want to do X, Y, Z. Life is going to say, I, I, I can do that for you. But in order for you to do that, this is what I need you to do. And most people balk on it. God came to me, man. Look, man, I've been married for seven years. Uh, man, you know, I work hard to provide for my wife. She's a stay home wife. You know, I, I look after Kara, but we've been cold for a while. She seems distant. I want to be a better husband. I want a better marriage. And so we talked and I, I came to a conclusion of what it was. He had this illusion because he was a sole provider financially that that somehow gave him the freedom to do whatever he want. He wasn't cheating on her with another woman, but he had he felt he had the right to hang out with his buddies two and three times a week instead of being at home, strengthening the marriage and helping his wife with the children. So I told him, I said, look, the problem is that you are still trying to live life. You, you got a demand for life. You want a better marriage. That's the demand. You want this awesome marriage that you see the potential of, but you don't experience. And life is saying, I can do that for you. God saying, I can do that for you. However you want to pitch it. God, life, the universe, don't matter to me. But God, God has said, hey, I got that, but hey, here's my counter demand. You're going to have to come out of the streets, spend more time at home. You're going to have to come out of the streets and, and show some appreciation for your wife. You're going to come out of the streets and actually acknowledge the unbelievable force that your wife is in the home that allows you to be the man that you are outside of the home. You're going to have to acknowledge those things. And so he went off and he said, okay, I can do that. So he told us, I said, tell your buddies, maybe once a month, but that, that two and three times a week stuff, that's got to go. You know, uh, you and you need to be centered and hanging around other married men. It's, th 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 so he went off and he came back a couple of months later, Doc, this didn't work. You told me to do this. It didn't work. I said, let's sit down and talk about it. Well, what happened was he said it got worse. I said, well, tell me what happened. Why the reason it got worse wasn't because he didn't make the sacrifice, it's because he begrudgingly made the sacrifice. So now you're not in the street, you're at home, but now your wife sees you don't want to be there. Now, yeah, that's worse because now you're making her feel like she's taking something for you and you resent her for being in your life. 
you're going to have to actually see what you, you know, if you, if you want a true marriage, you're going to have to realize what that means. That means acknowledging your partner as your equal. It means acknowledging your partner, a partner for what they do to make your life special. Stop seeing yourself as the only one that's doing something great in the relationship and understand just how awesome she is. And when you start to do that, you'll start to appreciate the time that you get to have with her. And then you will be sitting up looking at it and going, man, I can't go. Can't go today, man. You know how many times people call me up? My wife had to ask him, man, you need to go hang out with your brother. You need to go. I'm like, I'm good. Why? Because I found what I was looking for and I understand the value of having it. And yeah, we both need our time. But I'm like, hey, look, life will give me time. You're going to be somewhere doing something one day and I'm going to go hang out with my brother. But just sitting up having an opportunity with you, you win every time. Why? Because I see the future in you. And it's not just in marriage, it's in anything you do. You've got to find what you, you, you're talking about finance. You want to excel in finance and you tell life, I want to excel. I want to be a millionaire. I want to start, whatever it is. And life say, okay, you got to stop doing this. Every time you get money, you're going out and you're buying new purses. Every time you're going out, you're buying new sneakers. Every time you're going out, you, 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 you <clears throat> every time, every time you look up, you, 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 you're out spending money. In, in, in different places and you're not seeing the true uh, vision of what you're talking about. You're not behaving as if you want it. You're sitting up and saying you want it, but you're not doing it. And the thing is, what should you be doing? And then life will say, this is what you're going to have to do. And then you got to make up in your mind. Can I let go of uh, always being out and, and eating out all the time? Can I let go of always uh nurturing my shoe fetish can i let go of always trying to you know have the most expensive name brand thing can i let go of all that just long enough to create a reality for me where money wouldn't even matter anymore and then i can do all of those things without hurting myself it's the sacrifice yeah you you talk about you want a business and, 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 and a lot of people will malign those of us. Uh, uh, so, uh, there are a lot of people that will uh, malign those who have traditional jobs. I'm not one who who does that. Uh, who had uh, malign? What, what what I say is you got to do what you got to do because kids got to eat, roofs got to be over your head. You got to do those things. But here's what I'm saying: you should never be working harder for someone else to fulfill their dream than you are fulfilling yours. So if I'm gonna put in eight hours at the job, I'm coming in. I'm putting another eight hours into my business, another eight hours into developing a business plan, a financial plan, into developing and putting in work. I'm gonna work harder on my dream than I'm working on yours. I'm gonna come up to work and I'm gonna put in work at my job because there's a level of F, uh, work ethic and a, a, a level and pride of excellence of how I'm gonna do something. So I'm gonna come to your, I'm gonna come do that, but I'm gonna come home and work harder on mine. I'm not gonna come home and wanna sit up and watch four hours a movie. I'm not gonna come home and wanna sit up and go hang out with my friends. I'm not gonna come home and wanna sit up and do reality television. I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna put in the same energy and effort into what that, does. I'm gonna make the sacrifices that are necessary to push myself to where I say I wanna be. It's not about, that, that entitlement thing has got this entire generation screwed up. I just need to exist and I shall have. And then when it doesn't happen, they get frustrated at everybody except themselves. Look, there are people that will do things to you. That's going to happen in the world. There are going to be people out there that are just naturally evil. They will harm you if they get a chance. There are people out there who are naturally exploited. They will take advantage if they get a chance. But the, prime, the, 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 the bottom line is this. 99% of what's happening in your life, you have a means of controlling. If you are that in tune with your life, in tune with your purpose, and in tune in the direction you're supposed to go. A bunch of stuff is happening because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's the real truth. You don't want to come to grips with it because then it calls you to be accountable to your own vision. It's, it calls you to be accountable to your own dream and desires. You're going to have to be accountable. You're going to have to make up in your mind what it is you want to do. Then you're going to have to step out there and do it. Then you're going to have to have the intestinal fortitude to push through. Because here's what I can tell you. In being able to start the number of businesses that I've started since the age of 20, well over 40, well over 40 businesses. I'm, on, I'm 54, but well over 40 businesses. The, the, the amount of focus it has taken me to write 25 books, to counsel hundreds, to work with hundreds, 
to write thousands, literally thousands of articles and to record and to publish thousands upon thousands of videos. It requires a level of commitment and it requires a level of fortitude. Why? Because everything I've done hasn't worked the first time around, hasn't worked the second time around. Hasn't. It, it has taken me to sit up and say, until I get it right, I'm going to keep going. There's no option to quit in my contract with myself. There's no option to give up in the contract that I have with myself. My contract stipulates and says very clearly, once I set out to do it, I have two options. I'm going to either get it done or I'm going to die in the midst of trying. No other options allowed. And that's the way you work at life. That's the way you fight at it. People will be looking at you and going, man, haven't you been on that for like four years? Yeah. But just wait. Be the same person when it breaks through. Man, hey, man, can you show me? Man, I've been doing, you've been sitting there. You could have been working with me. Why Mike would have been able to cut the time in half, but you were too busy watching, hoping that I failed. And that's why you're sitting right there wondering now, how do you get on the inside? Let me tell you something. Find you a circle that believes in you. Find you a circle that will fan your flames. Find you a circle that is going where you're going or has already been there. You need to uh, surround yourself with people who have the capacity to draw you through, push you through, carry you through, elevate you. You got a bunch of people around you that can't wait to tell you why you're not going to be able to do it. Can't wait to remind you of what you used to do. Can't wait, uh, wait to remind you what happened the last time you tried to get out of the box. You got to find people that's already outside of the box. Who's not chained to the constricts of the box. Who has the capacity to think laterally and critically and move in a direction and in a way that moves them beyond the common constructs that refrain uh, uh, or that, that restrain us from doing the things that we desire to do. There are really nothing that stops us but our own mental limitations. But in order to break free of those, you got to be around people who think outside of the box because the box people in the box thinking with the same restrictions. Man, you can't do it. Can you imagine being inside the box when Arvel and Wilbur Wright sit up and say, man, we're going to make a machine that can fly and people can ride in it and you can put your luggage in it. We're going we gonna to travel in the air. Can you imagine how many people were in the box that had a, uh, a, 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 a an opinion about what they were saying and thought they were crazy and didn't have problems telling them how stupid they were? The person who created the cell phone said, man, I'm tired of talking on the phone that, that you got to be uh, tethered to the wall. I, I want to talk on the phone where I can be anywhere I want to be and talk. I think I'm going to do that. Can you imagine how many people, can you imagine how many people Sit up and say, man, you can't make no phone. You got to have the wires in order for, you know, shoot, man, they didn't want to believe when Alexander Graham Bell was talking about doing it with the wires. And now you're trying to tell me you're going to do it without the wires. And yet here we are. Everybody picks up their cell phones now, never even gives us a second thought of how your signal is getting to the person who's receiving it. But you got to believe in yourself and you got to step outside of the box. You got to be outside of the box to do things that exist outside of the box. Larry, Larry Love, uh, specifically, uh, you say you, you're interested in earnings from the website. Uh, is that the uh, if you're talking about the inbox dollars, which is you can you can earn money with inbox dollars a couple uh, 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 several several different ways, primarily in a number of different ways uh, by taking surveys, by opening emails by surfing the web just by surfing the web you get points and the more points you get the more dollars you earn and again i'm telling you now it's not uh you're gonna go on there and in five minutes you got a hundred dollars it's time consuming but if you're in a situation where you are actually in need of money it works i know it works because i did it and you know and i'll tell you it wasn't fun because it wasn't what i wanted to do it was what i needed to do it was what took me and actually gave me a feeling where I was able to recover. 
And I'm telling you, if I can come from that space to where I'm at now and to where I'm headed, and I got some things on deck that, I, I mean, that, that will just blow your mind. I'm so excited about. But again, I've learned you can't share everything because everybody's not cheering for you. And to expose it and then put it under spiritual attack when it's not necessary. I've learned some things you just got to sit on. But I'm telling you, things are really, really going and to, to sit up and think. There were people who were literally celebrating my demise. There were people who were really actually celebrating my demise. And yet here I am. So my thing is, there's absolutely nothing that can stop you when you make up in your mind. So if 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 Larry, if that's what you're talking about, the link is going to be at the top of the description box on the page that you are on on Facebook. I said you're on Facebook. It's going to be at the top of the description box. Just go in, click the link, and it's going to take you right to the page. Just sign up, and you'll get the instructions, uh, and you can get started. It's free. So this is something that you can do. And on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get ahead. As I always say, I live my life on full, and I am going to die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. Now, again, uh, this is uh, a, a new thing. We are now, this segment that we're going to do every morning, uh, Monday through Friday, is going to be called the Dream Matrix. It's a part of the Visionetics Institute, and it's about empowering people uh, to pursue their vision and their dream and to see the importance of that. Uh, this isn't about fantasy. This is about visions and dreams and they're different. There's a difference between the vision and the dream and the fantasy. And a lot of people don't know that and that's why they're so confused. We're gonna talk about all of that in the coming days, but definitely check out Inbox Dollars, uh, which is, uh, this dream matrix is brought to you by Inbox Dollars and Living Green Supreme Foods. Uh, check out the links, figure out, uh, how, you know, if there's something you want to deal with, but definitely go check them out, if nothing else. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for dropping in. You have been unbelievable. I'm out.